So this time, we are going to talk about chords. Chords are three or more simultaneously sounded pitches. The most common chord is the triad. With a triad, the number three is very important. It's a three note chord, specifically. Chords can have more than three notes, but a triad has three notes, but not just any three notes. Three notes stacked in thirds. Let me explain what that means. That means if I start with a C, I then say, well, that's one of my three notes. What's a third above a C? An E. What's a third above an E? A G. Triad. A triad is a three note chord stacked in thirds, also called tertial harmony. Now, there's other types of tertial harmony other than triads, but this is one example of tertial harmony. So, with these triads, they have different, there's, they're called different types. Another word for that is sonorities. And we have four common types, four common sonorities. And each one has a different kind of uh, formula. So again, we're going to be using our scales to find out our different triad types. So if you take a major scale and you take the first, third, and fifth note of a major scale, you will have a major triad. So, in a C major scale, the first note is C, the third note is E, and the fifth note is G. So C, E, G is a major triad. Let's do a couple really quickly. And you'll just think about these notes in your head as I go over them. An E flat major triad. So you think E flat major scale, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, and you only got to think about the first five notes because you're going to go E flat, G, B flat. And you can just write it out with the letter names or you can notate them, but E flat, G, B flat would be a major triad. So you go through your 15 major scales and you make sure you can name the major triad, one, three, five for each scale. You then know all your major major triads in every key. Now, we're now going to look and say, well, how can we modify? What formula can we apply to get our other triads? So, if we have our major triad here as 1, 3, 5, for an augmented triad, it's 1, 3, sharp five, or we could just say raised fifth, because this sharp doesn't necessarily mean sharp. It doesn't mean we're actually going to have a sharp note. It means we're going to raise it a half step from whatever it would normally be in the major scale. So some, sometimes people will say sharp five. I'm going to erase that and just put raised fifth, so that we understand that you might not actually see a sharp sign. Let me give you an example of that. Please think of your D flat major scale in your head right now. Imagine. D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat. D flat is the first note, F is the third, A flat is the fifth note, but we want to make it augmented so we're going to raise that A flat a half step and make it an A natural. D flat F, A natural is our augmented triad. And let's get some sounds in our ears. That would be. Okay? So, that would be our augmented triad. What about, we have our major, what about our minor triad? Okay? Formula here is one lower third, fifth. Okay? So please think 
of your G major scale. G, A, B, C, D. So the G is good, the B is normal, but we lower that a half step. So it becomes a B flat and D. So G, B flat, D is our minor triad. And that would sound like... And then last is our diminished triad. For our diminished triad, one, three, five, always. But we lower here the third and the fifth. One lowered third, lowered fifth. Let's think of our D major scale. D major scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A. So the D is good. The F sharp becomes an F natural. The A becomes an A flat. That would be our D diminished triad. Sounds like. So, augmented, major, minor, diminished. These are our sonorities or types of triads. And we now have a formula so that we can figure out the notes in all circumstances. Let's use our ears because it's always good to tie theory to what it sounds like. Your major triad, we'll do this all in the key of C. We'll jump to the augmented. We'll then go to minor. finally diminished. You want to be able to intellectually understand what those different triads are and then also by ear. So if you were to play those triads, you could by ear identify which one the, which ones was each. Alright, so we have those sonorities. Let me rewrite things just a little bit differently. And we're going to talk not only about traditional classical music theory, we're going to talk about contemporary and popular music theory a little bit as well. So in pop contemporary jazz, they often use lead sheet symbols to notate triads. They don't write them out like I was just writing them out on a staff or with the letters. Again, our triad types are augmented, major, minor, diminished. Augmented can look like a plus sign. You'll often find that. Diminished can look like a small circle. In lead sheet symbols, the root of the chord, and let me explain that when we said one, three, five, the one is also called the root. The three is called the third. And the five is called the fifth. So when you'll often hear people say root, third, fifth. The root is the first note. With lead sheet symbols, the root of the chord is always written as a capital letter of that pitch. So let's say we're in, we're writing a B flat augmented triad, or a B-flat major triad, or a B-flat minor triad, or a B-flat diminished triad. It does not matter which one. You will always write an uppercase B-flat, because it is the root of the triad, root of the chord. At no point will you write lowercase letters. This is sometimes different than in classical, because sometimes when you're indicating a key signature, a minor key signature, you'll use a lowercase letter. This is not so for lead sheet symbols. It's always uppercase. Then, for an augmented triad, you put the plus sign after it. That tells you a B flat augmented triad, which means the notes B flat, D, and F sharp. For a major triad, usually you don't do anything. 
you just leave the B flat. So if you see a B flat sitting there all by itself, that doesn't mean the note B flat, that means a B flat major triad. B flat, D, F. B flat minor, this is what I consider the best way, a minus sign. That would be B flat minor, B flat, D flat, F. There are other ways, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but this is what I consider the easiest, the most commonly used, easiest to read, easiest to not make mistakes. For B flat diminished, we take that little circle. B flat diminished would be B flat, D flat, F flat. You would not say E, which is enharmonically the same as F. You would say F flat because it needs a root, a third, and a fifth. And the fifth is F. And then we modify it down a half step. So B flat, D flat, F flat. Now, some other options. Sometimes people will write B flat with a lowercase m. The reason I don't like that is people who write sloppy, you can't tell if it's upper or lowercase. Where no matter what you do with a minus sign, it looks like a minus sign. Sometimes for major, people write an uppercase m. Again, if this were to be written sloppy, or this, these two could be confused. And you don't want to do that. Sometimes people will write out AUG for augmented, so you might see B flat AUG or B flat DIM. You will still sometimes see those as lead sheet symbols. But right here, that is the one I recommend you use. It's the most common, it's the easiest, quickest to read. All right, so we've now talked about triads, their types, how to figure them out, the formulas, and the lead sheet symbols. We are not done. Tertial harmony also includes larger chords. So beyond the triad, we have the seventh chord. which is also a tertial harmony because it is built by stacking thirds. Let's take our note C, and we will stack thirds. Up a third is E, E up a third is G, G up a third is B. This is called a seventh chord, not because there are seven notes in it, but because the interval between the root and the top note is a seventh. If we were to look at the formula here, it would be 1, 3, 5, 7. If you were to think of your C major scale and what 1, 3, 5, 7, you would get a major triad with a major seventh. This first thing I'm putting right here is indicating the triad type. This second, what kind of seventh? So this is the way I'm going to indicate this. The first letter indicates the triad type, and the second is the kind of seventh, major seventh. So let's just think here a second here, uh, and go to C, E, G, and let's have a B flat. And just think to yourself, what kind of triad type do we have? Well, it's a major triad. And what kind of seventh? Well, C to B flat is a minor seventh. So we will call this a major minor seven chord. Major major seven chord, major minor seven chord. If we look at our formula now, it would be one, three, five, lowered seventh. You take any major scale, one, three, five, and a lowered seventh, you will have yourself a major minor seventh chord. They will call this a major seven chord. They will call this a major minor seven chord. Another name is often called a dominant 
7, or dominant 7th chord. So major minor 7s are also called dominant 7s. We're going to talk about why that is in another lecture. But we've got more 7th chords we cannot stop yet. If we were to take a C, an E flat, a G, and a B flat, and say, well, what do we have? What type of triad? C, E flat, G, that is a minor triad. C to B flat, that is a minor 7. So we say a minor, minor 7. How we could indicate what that is. And in general, instead of repeating that word, we would just say a minor 7 chord. So this is how you would say it right here. Major 7 chord, major minor 7 chord, minor 7 chord. This is how you would be specifically name it by triad and seventh type. This is the formula that you would apply to a major scale to get the notes in that seventh chord. Formula here then is one, lower third, fifth, lower seventh. We are not done. We have more. I have for you a C, an E flat, a G flat, and a B flat. Again, I will ask you what type of triad that is. C, E flat, G flat is a diminished triad. What type of seventh? It is a minor seventh. This is called a half diminished seventh. Another name more commonly used in jazz would be minor seven. Actually, let me write that out. Minor seven, that's fine. Flat five. Half diminished seven or minor seven flat five means the same thing. Those are two ways that they call that. The formula would be one, lowered third, lowered fifth, lowered seven. Now I recognize that these formulas are very easy when we're dealing with a C major scale because lowering things just means it puts a flat there. When you're dealing with sharp keys, it's still a really easy formula because you're just turning sharps into naturals. Where this formula becomes a little uh, less helpful, a little more complicated, is when you're dealing with flat keys and you're turning things into double flats. So it's just a word of warning, so to wrap your head around it when you get to that point. Our last one, and I mentioned that double flat seven because, or the double flat because this is exactly what we get here, a double flat seven. And this is a diminished triad with a diminished seven. And they call this either a diminished 7 chord or fully diminished. And our formula would be 1 lower 3rd, lower 5th, double lowered 7. Okay? These are our 5 sonority types. And these are the five common sonority types. There are more. There's more types of seventh chords, but these are the common ones. We're not, we're, that's all we're going to deal with for right now. Four types of triads that are commonly used, five types of seventh chords. Now, just like we had lead sheet symbols and a whole way of doing that for triads, we have the same for seventh chords. So down here, I'm going to write how that lead sheet symbol would look. For a major, major seven, again, our, we're going to use the uppercase letter to indicate the root of the chord. So all of these will be C, uppercase C. For a major seven, capital M, capital, capital A, seven. So C, M, A, seven is what we would write. For a major, minor seven, we write a C and a seven. For a minor 7, we write the C, 
the minus sign, and the 7. For the half diminished 7 chord, we write a C, a circle with a slash going from upper right to lower left. Not the other way around. Upper right to lower left. That is our half diminished symbol. So C, half diminished 7. And then our diminished 7 is a C with our circle 7. And those would be our, our ways of indicating lead sheet symbols for 7th chords. Okay? Now, there are some other variations of these, just like I mentioned for, for triads. Sometimes people will write C, M, A, J for major. Sometimes they'll write C, a triangle in 7. Those are options. This is the only way that dominant is ever written. Minor, sometimes it's C with a lowercase m. Sometimes they'll put a line over the m. For the half diminished, sometimes in jazz especially, you'll see C minor 7, flat 5. So it's saying take a, make a C minor 7 and lower the fifth a half step. Sometimes you will see that. That's the only thing you'll see for diminished. What this should do now is give you how to figure out every type of commonly used triad and seventh chord and the lead cheat symbols. This is something that takes a little bit of time to really practice. So just as I recommend writing out all 15 major scales, very neatly, very clearly, until you can kind of have a photograph of that in your mind and you know your scales very quickly, you need to do similar for all of these triads and seventh chords. So you need to practice it. You need to go through and practice naming the letters for each one, such that I could say to you, tell me the notes in a F sharp major seven chord. And you go F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, E sharp. I'll say, okay, how about an E flat seven chord? E flat, G, B flat, D flat. How about an A minor seven? A, C, E, G. And you can just go through any, with any root and the name of the sonority, you can go through and name the letters for each triad and seventh chord. That's going to take a little bit of time. So I urge you to start investing it because that is going to be our next building block on how we then talk about how these chords relate to each other. Thank you.